Our first discussion will be about proportion. Talking about proportion is essentially talking about the amounts used. The amount of red versus the amount of black versus the amount of white. The small amounts of shape, the amount of small shapes versus the amount of large shapes, and so on. There are two categories of proportion that deserve our attention. Contrast and balance. In this image, we can see contrast on clear display. The contrast of the large letter forms versus the large red panel. Horizontal versus vertical directions. Red versus black versus white. The natural world is a continuous seamless visual environment. The creative spirit tends to impose its momentum and augment our perception of this natural state. One very dynamic means for imposing such an augmentation is the creation of contrast. Whether it's the contrast of a surprise ending or something large versus something small, contrast typically cannot be ignored. Contrasts abound. Noted painter and educator Johannes Itten identified a range of contrasting conditions in his basic course at the legendary Bauhaus school of post-World War I Germany. In addition to a widely used system of seven color contrasts, the types of visual contrasts he suggested included the following list. This sign is a detail from a larger panel that is opposite the elevator doors on the fifth floor of the Museum of Modern Art. This is a great example of information design, but it's also a very good use of contrast on several levels. A contrast of black letters to the white background and to the white light gray words exists. Also a small amount of black type to the larger amount of gray type. Also consider heavy versus light, strong versus weak, and soft versus loud. This image by André Cartes is a great example of contrast, horizontal versus vertical, plane versus volume, hard versus soft, precise versus hazy. There's a lot of contrast taking place in this image, this painting, by Fernand Legere. This Legere painting is, painting is also a great example of both contrast and balance. There's a sense of balance going on specifically in regards to the use of color. There are three qualities responsible for achieving balance. Size, value, or color, and location. Four colors are being used here. Black, red, yellow, and white. In Legere's composition, all four colors are nearly of equal visual hierarchy. The red shape is smaller than all the other shapes, but it has an advantage over the other colors in terms of intensity of hue and its location, which is towards the center. Still, there appears to be an overall sense of equilibrium regarding the overall distribution and balance of color. Balance is about the distribution of weight or forces to achieve a state of harmony or equilibrium. There are four predominant means for controlling these underlying forces within a composition. Symmetrical balance, asymmetrical balance, approximate symmetry, and radial symmetry. This assemblage by Jasper Johns is a great example of symmetrical balance. Symmetry is a mirrored sense of balance. The left half of the composition is virtually identical to the right half. This painting by Piet Mondrian is a great example of asymmetrical balance. The visual forces have a more random sense of distribution than, uh, than that which is found in symmetrical compositions, but there is a felt sense of overall balance. This window display for Ralph Lauren is a great example of approximate symmetry. The draped fabric in the upper half forms an inverted V, or an upside-down V, which extends into the lower half by way of the fringed fabric on the right, underneath the figure. Closure allows for the near completion of a virtual diamond shape. I'll kind of draw that out for you over here. 
talking about this. The reclining figure is offset to the left, creating emphasis. The fabric is offset to the right, creating a counterweight to the figure. The result is the result of the mutual offsetting helps to evoke a sense of balance. This poster by Paula Scher is a great example of symmetrical balance and radial symmetry occurring at the same time. There's another type of balance used here that we alluded to earlier in the Legere painting. It's about balance in regards to the amounts used, or specific, specifically here, the amount of color used. For example, reducing the amount of blue by reducing the size of the head, for example, might shift emphasis towards the yellow background and the seemingly larger black type, reducing the importance of the figure and shifting the balance of visual weights. The weight and amount of warm color is brought into near balance by the weight and small amount of darker cool colors that clothe the figure. This Kertesz photo demonstrates both contrast and asymmetrical balance. We'll finish this discussion by returning to our lobby, an example once again of both contrast and asymmetrical balance.